Hello everyone, welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. On today's feature, we're finally checking out the Remarkable Tablet. It's a paper tablet that you can use to take notes, um, to even create folders, and to keep yourself organized. Now, it's a really nice balance between analog and digital. I wanted to review a, a combination of things today, the design, the hardware, the software, and all you need to know, but I will be doing a longer review. But without further ado, folks, let's dive into today's video. <laughs> So you guys may have seen the Remarkable Tablet that I've been sort of sharing in a few videos and I've had it for about two months now and I've been following the company for quite a while now. Um, I think I first saw them on Kickstarter and was pretty impressed and the main reason I wanted to review it here on the channel is because it's, as I said, it's this weird combination, weird, between analog, um, you know, paper to some extent, and digital. So, for example, like Todoist um, and Notion, etc. It's sort of like a, a middle ground. Um, and of course, there's going to be many people in the comments, you know, asking me how it compares to iPads and other details like that. And I'll do my very best to come to that at the end. But I will be doing a much more in-depth feature. I want to share a few of the small things that have happened to me as I'm using this device and also how it frames itself as well. So that's a really important thing. How does this uh, frame itself and the way that they promote it on their website is it's this thinking tool and it's designed to get you offline to help you utilize uh, the written page to some extent um, so it really does sort of you know really encourage you to get in the mindset of offline um, and try and work on this e-ink display. So let's first start by talking about the design. Now, first off, it is very thin. As you can see, it's about a, a pencil length thick, and uh, it also has a very nice design. Something that I really liked on the back of it is at the top and the bottom, you have this like rubber that helps, for example, if you wanna put it on a table, so it doesn't necessarily shake or move when you're trying to take notes. And that's a really small detail, but actually helps to improve your writing and also get you a bit more focused. Now, one thing I'd say about the back while we're talking about it is the the actual silver back that they've got here, it's, it gets a little bit scuffed and I've been fairly careful with it, keeping it in a portfolio that they offer with it. I'll talk about some of the accessories near the end. And actually, it got a little bit scuffed. You can see the scuff marks and naturally, that's a bit of a pain. Maybe that's because I got the white edition and it doesn't happen in the black one. But as you can imagine, something to note um, on the quality. However, aside from that, the e-ink display looks lovely. It works very well. There are three buttons at the bottom. In the middle, you've got the home button, so that will help you to return home. And the other two are for scrubbling between pages. And what's really nice is when you're using it, it sounds like paper. I don't know whether you can hear that but it's sort of like this weird blend between you know you're writing on a digital device, but you're also writing uh, on uh, feels like paper. There's also this uh, home button at the top or, or on off button, and you can hold it to go into sleep mode and you can hold it for longer to turn off. Now, something I'd say is the battery life is pretty reasonable on this device. It touts a five to seven day battery life, but I would say it's a little bit less than that, but maybe that's because I've been connected to the Wi-Fi that it has inside of it. So I probably get about three to five days, depending on how aggressively I use it. I would say that if I, for example, used it for a couple of hours in the evening, which I typically do these days, because I quite, I'll explain my opinion near the end of it, um, but I'll just, for example, be uh, writing or making sketches or something like that, and naturally, that's when the battery depletes faster. But the good thing about this is, even though that three to five battery days life that I've experienced, it does charge up in one hour. So that's a pretty reasonable recharge time. Okay, so that was more about the hardware, and let's talk a little bit about the software. Now, let's talk about this. This is the pen that comes along with it, although this one isn't. There's two types of pen. There's like a 
classic one. I don't know the word for it. And there's also this signature one. Now they both, both work in the same way. One is white, one is black. But as you can imagine, it does allow you to write uh, pretty well on it. They have these nib things at the top and you can change them. They give you some cartridges for free. I don't think they get worn down as fast. I've probably only changed mine once in two months, but uh, it's something to note um, because obviously there, I think the, the tips are in the range of say eight, uh, for an eight pack it's 12 pound, which $12, which is fairly high for paying for nibs, but um, again, something to note down uh, when you're purchasing this. Now, inside of the software itself, you can do a range of things. Now, I want to start with the Wi-Fi. You can connect to your home Wi-Fi or whatever Wi-Fi you're on. There's no 3G cellular connectivity. However, it does limit you to what you can do. You can do one of two things. You can either uh, connect it so that it syncs and you can see your, for example, your notebooks and notes on your Mac or Windows, or you can upload PDFs or files that you want to annotate on the device. And I've done this a couple of times, mainly for like the guidance documents for the house and read them on here. Um, and it's helpful for annotating, but nothing major. It's again, something that you'll find that you may use, but you could probably do with something else you already use like Scannable or Evernote. Now, the one thing you can do is when you get set up, you can create these three areas and they're called folders, naturally, uh, notebooks, and inside of any of your notebooks, you can create notes. Now, the good thing is, one thing I was impressed with is they have things called templates. So for example, you create a note, you don't necessarily have to have it blank. You can have dotted notes, um, you can have these pre-created week planners, and a range of other ones as well. So you do get to start out both in portrait and landscape if you want to get started. So once you create a notebook, there is a range of options down the left hand side. You get to change your type of pen and the pen can range from anything from ballpoint pens to fine liners to markers to pencils to paintbrushes and highlighters as well. But something to note on the highlighter side is obviously this is an e-ink display. It's only going to show one color and that is dark. So you can do shades. So you can do... I believe it's a thin, thick, and th uh, thick, thin, medium, and thick. And also, when you're using the highlighter, you can change the shade. You have an eraser, and you can also move certain elements around. You can zoom in, zoom out. So it is a very handy canvas. Now, there is something called Live View. I haven't used it yet, but they do state it's in beta. And I believe that means you can see on your PC or your Mac a live view of what you see on screen. You can also do handwritten text and then convert it into text because it's able to analyze that and then actually produce um, text when you're on the screen. So that could be pretty helpful for taking notes, but I would say you have to be a very good writer. I'm very loopy and it didn't really, some aspects of it didn't understand my converting. So I haven't really used that feature aggressively since. Now, the one feature I've liked is the send by email feature. Now, the send by email feature allows you to send any of the pages inside of a notebook or a notebook as a whole to other people in your team in a range of different formats. So that's very handy for when you're attached to Wi-Fi and you want to send it to somebody else. And it does definitely look a lot more professional being able to send it in a PNG or PDF, which is very helpful. Now, there are some abilities for sketches. There's thing called layers where you can edit the layers. For example, you can change the template, add a layer, move a layer around. So you can maybe add this different layer of sketching. Um, if you're, for example, an architect, they do promote that a lot, that this is more for thinkers than it is necessarily for folks like myself. Um, and you can also go and set it to landscape view as well as see a page overview or create any new page at any given time. Now, one thing I started doing from scratch was uh, I obviously just started just getting stuck in with it. So I pretty much created a bunch of notes that I didn't necessarily use massively. So 
be careful when you're starting if you do um, because the notebooks obviously you can get carried away so I created this sort of new structure I've got now which is like pretty much just like active notes for content ideas and thoughts and things like that and projects which are project based notebooks for example like house and business map so it can actually sort of plan out stuff a bit more strategically so you do get to access menu where you can see all of your notebooks, PDF, ebooks, and favorites. You can view stuff in list or gallery view, um, but those are the only two options. And one thing I'd say is you get, when you get the Remarkable um, tablet, you do get a version which does look incredibly different to the version I'm showing you. So make sure you go to settings and check that you've got enable update on. So on the uh, settings side of stuff, you can do a range of things. You can set it to flight mode. You can change your account details. You can change the Wi-Fi you're connected to. You can see your power and some of the battery saving abilities. And also storage, which is something I wouldn't think I'd look at. But at the same time, you don't really need to worry about storage that much. Unless you're uploading super, super heavy PDFs to this device. For example, I've only used 0.39 gigabytes of 6.5 gigabytes, so I doubt that I'll have to worry about reaching that storage limit anytime soon. You can also set a passcode and also change the handwriting um, conversion settings um, so that you can change it to another language. You can modify the keyboard as well as some of the other accessibilities. So there is also something called Quick Sheets, which allow you to get started pretty instantaneously, give you an example of the features. But in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see your battery percentage and your Wi-Fi. So before I dive into the pricing and some of the questions that I've been getting already, I'm going to say I like it. I'm going to say I like it 7 to 8 out of 10. And the main reason is I've never really had a tablet. So for me... This is like a really nice experience that one takes me away from the screen and allows me to make like, for example, content notes, write notes, write thoughts. And I particularly enjoy using it at the moment for taking notes when I'm doing courses and actually saving paper around the house minimalist style use of it because you're using a little less paper across the day. Um, but it doesn't necessarily replace, say, journaling or anything like that. I like journaling on paper. I don't know why. I think it's because I know that I'm going to pass it on to someone else in the future. But I think the main reason I like it is because it's really well crafted in its design. And it also just works very well. I just like that. I think I really like it about there. The things that sort of the cons that I've noticed is that... I would sort of like weirdly to be connected to other services, but that sort of defeats the point of the product. If, for example, I could see a newspaper on here or get crossword or apps like that, like Sudoku, which I thought initially, then that might ruin the natural offline aspects of it. And the thing that I don't like as well is the pricing, which I'll come to in a moment. I don't think it's very well priced. I think it's designed for more of a premium market, I know that from seeing some of the videos they do and all that, but then at the same time, it is a bit steeper than I thought, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So one of the questions that I mentioned earlier was, why not just buy an iPad? An iPad does all of this and more. And, and why this is different is because it's more of an offline tool. It's to help you get away from that environment. With an iPad, you will get tons more value Honestly, if you when you look at the price, you'll go, you'll get tons more value getting an iPad. And you could potentially get something like paper like, which I know Ali Abdel uses, to add on top of your iPad to make it feel more paper like. But that sort of defeats the point of the tablet itself. This tablet is designed to get you away from that environment. Um, and I'm seeing that more and more as I use it, because in the evenings, if I still want to keep my creative mind flowing, it doesn't necessarily, I notice like even Becca is noticing that like it's okay to use this. It doesn't distract me too much than say a phone with notes of notifications. 
And the other question I'm getting from you folks is like, how good is it in terms of the sketching abilities? And again, I would probably give this about a seven out of 10. I would say the iPad with the Apple Pen from using it beforehand is definitely more accurate. But what you don't get with that is more of a offline feel is that I guess that touch of paper um, than you would say, for example, with the, the Remarkable. So the pricing, this is where it comes a little bit tricky to talk about because the pricing's high. In the UK, it's £449 and in the US, and in the US, the pricing is £499. So you're looking at the price of a basic iPad. As you can imagine, that is steep. This is actually the first edition. There are now two editions as of this video, which means I probably have to review the Mark Remarkable 2 um, and sort of give you my opinions on it. But you can get refurbished models on the site for like $50 less. But again, steep pricing. I wasn't very happy with this pricing, if I'm honest. I believe for the same amount of pricing, you can get a, a, a basic iPad, the 128 gig model, and you could install the paper-like um, display on it for the same sort of price. But again, Apple tend to whap on huge um, prices for their pens or keyboards or accessories or even going up a model. So you may actually be spending a bit more at Apple depending on what you go with. Now, let's talk about the markers that you get with it. Now, the marker, the basic marker you get is $59. So you can buy the pen separately, which means you then add it up to $550. But I believe there's sometimes these starter packets which include it for free. Um, but if you wanted the signature on its own, I believe that's 99 bucks. Well, the signature pen is definitely nice. It's a really nice build quality. And I really like the click that it makes when you utilize it, but that has no value at the same time. Um, but I really like the pen that it comes with. As I said, the tips, uh, if you get an eight pack that you need for the top of this pen, then it's gonna be 12 bucks. So that's gonna add on. And the additional thing is if you want a folio with it, which is either a leather design or this sort of canvasy design, I'm not sure what the quality or the name of the product is, but I'll include it below, which range from anything from $79 to $129. So you can definitely see why this is more of a premium experience. It's definitely looked it's definitely aimed for those businessmen that want to switch off but take really attractive notes and email them on. Now, since we've done this video, there is a Remarkable 2, so I will look to get in touch with the team. But my opinion is I really like this device. I'm continuing to use it. Um, as you can imagine, uh, it's high in price to start out with, but it's something that I think I would probably pay the price again you know, because I've actually found a huge amount of value from it. It's taken me away from the screen. It's also given me a paper-like experience, but then I've never had an iPad. Just take note into that. And also, it's given me a way to creatively think in the evenings. And that's something that has improved the quality of videos recently, I think, and has allowed me a bit more creative freedom. You're probably just saying, pick up some paper, Francesco, <laughs> because it'll be a lot cheaper. Um, but again, I guess this is somewhat environmentally friendly. Okay, folks, so I am looking in the future to do some more iPad apps. I'm looking to get an iPad soon. Uh, I'm going to look at the Rocketbook and put it against this. I'm also going to look to get the Remarkable 2 tablet. Uh, their updates in that one look a lot more attractive with the design. Um, so let's see. I will be doing more videos about this. I'm very impressed with this. Um, and some of the software side of stuff and the way that you can set it up may be useful as a video. So folks, thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new here to the Key Productive YouTube channel, please do hit subscribe. Also, if you enjoyed this video, folks, like it because that helps more and more people to discover it and also naturally gain a good review, hopefully good review of the Remarkable Tablet. And if you have one, please do share your description, your, your experience in the description below or the comments below. And if you're looking at it, maybe you can comment as well and sort of share your thoughts. And maybe I can fill in any of the gaps in the comments. But folks, thank you so much for stopping by. I really hope you enjoyed this feature and I will talk to you all very, very soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye.